Hello, welcome to examples 9, 10, and 13. This is pretty much what we did in the last couple of examples. It's just we're in um, an extra dimension right now. So A plus B. So A is um, 1 times um, the unit vector in the i-axis, 2 times the unit vector in the j-axis, and minus 1 times the unit vector in, in the in the z-axis, okay, that's what the definition of i, j, k is. So um, a plus b is simply equal to, you just need to add the components together. So um, 1 plus 3 in the i component. Uh, what have we got for j's here? We've got plus 2 and 0 there. So it's just 2 in the j thing. And for um, in the k direction, we've got minus 1 and minus 2 times the k direction, which if we rewrite this again, we've got 4i plus 2j minus 3k. Um, part b is a times 2b. So, um, so just like you can do with, well, we can just do it to start with. So 2b is equal to 2 times 3i plus well, minus, um, oh, we can say plus 2 times minus 2k. Okay, which equals 6i minus 4k. So that means that um, a minus 2b is equal to, what have we got in the i's? Um, we have 1 plus, um, we have 1 minus 6 i and um, in the j's we only have a 2 and in the um, k's we've got a minus 1 minus 2b so minus 4 so that's um, plus 4 And so we have 1 minus 6, so that equals minus 5i plus 2j uh, minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3k. Okay, so I'm really happy for any of you from the start just to say, um, well, that's 1 minus 2 times 3 is 6 for the i's. We've got a 2 and minus 2 times 0, so it says 2 minus 1 minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4, so that's 3. And that 3 doesn't look like a 3. All right, part C is um, A plus B plus C. So A plus B plus C equals... Um, so we've got 1, 3, and 2. 1 plus 3 plus 2 times i plus 2 plus 1 times the j, because there's nothing from b, plus, in the brackets, minus 1, minus 2, plus 1. Minus 1, minus 2, plus 1 times k which equals altogether um, 6i, 3j, minus 2k. Done. And part d, well, magnitude of a is just equal to um, the square root of 1, 
plus, sorry, well, one squared plus two squared plus minus one squared equals uh, one plus one plus plus four is square root of six equals, well, you can leave it as root three times root two or just leave it at that, okay? So um, the next part of this is still staying in three dimensions. And, um, but before we go on, well, we can do this before we do C, uh, excuse me, um, but we've got a, I was gonna look at our midpoint bonanza. That's really important for example 10 and example 13. Okay, but let's just do part A first and I'll get onto that in a sec. Um, part A, so we have these um, O to A's and O to B's and O to C's which are sticking purely in the, um, on the initial components, okay? So that's obviously three and O to B is five long and this one is O to C is four long, okay? So in terms of I, J, K, I need to find D to B. So this here is, um, so that is um, 3i, okay, so it's running parallel to O to A, but because we're going in the negative direction, um, D to B is actually equal to minus 3i, um, and uh, O to D, is going to equal um, the sum of this vector and then that vector, or the sum of that O to B and B to D. So either way it ends up being um, 3i. Did I write that wrong? That, is that supposed to be a five? I think that's just my bad handwriting. That is a five, isn't it? And that was three. Um, so it is going to be 3i, plus um, 5j. Okay, so we're still almost in th two dimensions there, aren't we? Um, part three is um, d to f. Is that the midpoint one? No. So this is f up here. Okay, d to f is just moving straight up in the um, k direction which was 4k and part 4 is O to F so we're going to move um, O to D plus D to F okay um, is 3i plus 5j plus 4k. Okay, it's a far corner, it shouldn't be surprising. Okay, surely there's nothing surprising at this stage. Um, if there is, make sure you speak to me in class. Um, so, what's the magnitude of O to F? Um, this should be just like year 10 level Pythagoras. Okay, three dimensional Pythagoras. So O to F, is just equal to the square root of 3 squ squared plus 5 squared plus 4 squared equals um, the 3 and the 4 makes 25 for the square root of 50 equals um, 5 times the square root of 2. Done. All right. So before we go on to C, and for also for the next example, um, let's remember a couple of things about midpoint, and hopefully we spoke about this in class already. So if I'm gonna to get to this midpoint here, so O to M is going to equal O to B 
plus a half of um, a to b, or o to m could also equal um, o to b plus a half of b to a. Okay, and so I've already got a to b up here, and you should also recognize that um, that's one thing, and you should also recognize that b to a is equal to o to a minus o to b. Okay, so that's always how I have a third point here, which is the origin when we're talking about um, vectors that don't include that one. Okay, so um, if I have a look at O to M uh, in, the, in the first line here, okay, up, up the top here, um, O to M, so O to B is equal to, O to M is equal to O to B, plus a half of A to B, which is O B, Oh, that should have been O A my mistake. Okay, so we go to O to A and then halfway there. So um, where was I going with this? Um, so that should have been A my mistake. Um, so O to B minus A to B, um, O to A, sorry. which equals, um, so we've got O to A, take away half of it, plus O to B. So in end, we end up with a half of O to A plus O to B. And this means that um, if you're looking at the midpoint of any two points, it, you just add them together and divide it by two. Now, hopefully, that is really obvious to you um, because that's exactly how um, in my year 10 class this year, we spoke about the midpoint um, between two points, okay? So in your um, linear algebra, uh, you would do, so if you had two points here and you got um, x1, y1, and you have another point over here, x2, y2, then this midpoint here is always equal to m is always equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2, okay? So using that same concept of linear algebra, um, it just makes perfect sense that this is also true for vectors because in the end, we're going to talk about a point being there and the vector is the distance from it to the origin or from one point to another, etc. Okay, so let's have a look at question C, part C here. And that is asking us, what is O to M? Okay, and I've already done that over here. So it's always going to be um, O to M, okay, because the midpoint of A and B is always going to equal a half of um, O to A, plus O to B. And what is that? Well, we've already worked out, um, oops, that's in that point there. So, my mistake. So, we're looking at this midpoint M here, okay? So that's the midpoint of O to, that's um, G to F, okay? So, which one do we have here already? Do we have an O to G already? No, we don't. Okay. So the mid the O to M is equal to, sorry, it's equal to O to G plus the midpoint of O to F. Okay, because it's midpoint of F to G. So this is always true, this rule, based on what I did up there, um, using the A and B is why I got confused this time. So, um, do we already have O to F? 
So let's just do a little side note here. Um, o to G is equal to um, 5J and 4K equals 5J plus 4K. So, and we've already got O to F from part four here. So that equals a half of, um, so 5J and uh, 4K, um, and there's just three I there. So two, so five and five, four and four. So three I plus 10 J plus eight K divided by two equals three on two I plus five J plus four K. All right, and I think they also, do they want us to get the magnitude? I think they do. Yep. So um, part C is now, for, uh, that is part C. Part D is now, well, it's all part C. What's the magnitude of O to M? So the magnitude of O to M is equal to um, square root of three on two squared plus five squared plus four squared equals 16 plus 25 is 30, 41. And, oh God. Does anybody here really need me to? Um, whatever that is, I should have prepared that one. Um, so nine on four plus 25 is um, 100 on four, I'll do it this way. Plus 16 is um, 64 on four. Uh, so I could put the half out the front, so that equals a half of the square root of um, 175, 173, whatever that is, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, it is. All right, and so this one here that looks a little bit um, complicated, if we're gonna use it from the vector point of view, uh, you've got this concept of a midpoint, but hopefully now, uh, example 13 makes that super clear, okay? So consider this a continuation of our midpoint bonanza. Um, so the midpoint, so M, is going to equal, so if you were to do it in the old school, um, like uh, your pre-VCE stuff, then it's, it is, it's just the average of each part of the point. But if we're gonna look at it um, as far as, like if you, how can I say, so you would look at it as, um, so if, so M, if M is a midpoint of A and B, then you would say five and two added together, divided by two, seven on two for the first one and so forth. Um, once again, you can you can say that um, O to M is going to equal a half of O to A plus O to B because M is the midpoint between o and B, A and B. It ends up doing exactly the same things as we've done in um, Cartesian coordinates or linear finding the, the midpoint of two points on a line. Um, so uh, O to A is 2, 2I minus 4J plus 5K. Um, so let's do it this way. Um, so the I's here is um, 2 plus 5. So that's 7I and um, 
minus four plus one is minus three j. Five plus seven is 12 k. So that equals um, seven on two i minus three on two j plus six k. So therefore, um, I don't know why I put a bracket there. Therefore, m is equal to seven on two comma minus three on two six. And um, do we need to, no, we don't need to find the length of O to M. Okay, so that gives you the point because that's the definition of O to M. It means, well, at the end we're getting to M. All right. Well done, I'm on to the next part of the exercise.